Hi everyone, so today we will test a simple scalping strategy using the S&P 500 historical data. We will explain the basics of the strategy and write everything in Python for backtesting. We have three years worth of data and I believe this would be enough to have a first idea about the performance and the results we are going to obtain. And as usual, the code is available for download through the link in the description below. So first we're using 15 minutes time frame for this video. You might want to experiment on different time frames, although I personally find that lower time frames are more difficult to control as the noise and fluctuations are usually more intense. So then we're looking for an engulfing pattern for this strategy and it could be a bearish or a bullish engulfing signal and we're going to add two conditions here. The first one is the minimum engulfing height which we can see on these candles so if we have an uptrend then we have a bearish engulfing candle we are going to look for this difference between the closing price of the previous candle and the opening price of the engulfing candle we're going to call this distance the minimum engulfing height and we're going to put a minimum distance to validate the signal meaning i'm looking for an up candle closing at a certain price but then the engulfing candle should open higher than the minimum engulfing height with regards to this particular price here. So I need this distance to be greater than the minimum engulfing height parameter that I'm going to leave as a variable in my code. And the second condition is the maximum candle tail, which is also left as an adjustable variable in our program. So we will need a certain engulfing height and a short or at least a limited candle tail length that is less than the maximum candle tail parameter that I'm going to fix in my program. Notice that this is the explanation for a bearish engulfing candle. We might also check the bullish engulfing candle in which case the engulfing distance would be right here and the tail that we're looking at is the lower tail of the engulfing candle. Now adding too many conditions would decrease the frequency and the number of our signals so we will take an additional consideration here to have more signals throughout our trading time. This is the normal engulfing pattern where one candle totally engulfs the previous one and this is the variation that we could also introduce into our algorithm so we can have more signals where we can allow two consecutive candles to engulf the previous candle if they are in the opposite direction and of course if they verify the conditions of the engulfment. Notice that the two additional conditions that we have previously added into this video regarding the, uh, the height of the engulfment and the candle tail limit can still apply to the first engulfing candle of the engulfment set. So this way we can have let's say two candles engulfing the previous candle from top to bottom. We can also imagine a different scenario where we allow three candles to achieve the engulfment of the previous candle. We can also allow four candles and so on. Since we don't know how many candles we should allow for the engulfment pattern or what would be the effect of such patterns, we are going to leave the allowed number of candles to achieve the engulfment as a variable in the program so we can change it as we want and experiment with the results if needed. So at this point, we can start writing our program and check the results of the backtesting. Okay, so this is our Jupyter Notebook file. I'm starting by loading the data into a data frame. I'm calling this the DFSPY. This is the name of our data frame variable using the read underscore CSV function. And I'm loading the 15 minutes time frame, the bit price, between 2019 up to 2022 so it's three years worth of data on the 15 minutes time frame so it should be enough to test our strategy then i'm setting the index that is equal to gmt time it's a column that is loaded into our data frame so this is going to be our index then we have this function which is called is engulfing it takes two parameters the data frame but also the L, which is the index of the current candle, we are going to test if it achieves an engulfing pattern. So the first parameter in this function is the back candles parameter, which is equal to three here. And this is the maximum number of candles that is allowed to achieve the engulfing pattern. In other words, I'm allowing maximum number of three candles to achieve the engulfment of the previous candle. So if the pattern is achieved with only one candle or two candle, 
this is fine three candles is the maximum but then if we are achieving an engulfment within four candles that is not allowed then the second parameter is the engulfment difference and this was already explained in this video so this is the difference basically between the opening price of the current candle and the closing price of the previous candle it's maximum 0 0.01 and these values will largely depend on which stock you are trading and on the value of the stock so for the uh, s p 500 i'm taking 0 0.01 for the moment and the wick limit meaning the maximum tail length for the candle is 0 0.02 if it's above this, if we have any value that is greater than this value, then the signal is cancelled since the wick limits or the tail length should be less than this particular value. Then we will walk through our conditions. So for um, bearish engulfing pattern, this is where we're returning one as a signal. And for the bullish engulfing pattern, we are returning two as a signal. So first with the bearish engulfing candle, we have to have a candle where the opening price is greater than the closing price, meaning it's a downward candle. And the previous candle should be in the opposite direction, meaning the closing is higher than the opening price, which means it's an upward candle. And at the same time, we have the open price of the current candle minus the closing price of the previous candle greater than the engulfing difference parameter which is set to 0 0.01 here and also one more condition where the high of the current candle minus the opening price of the current candle meaning the wick or the tail of the current candle should be less than the wick limit in the uh, bearish direction so in this case it should be less than 0 0.02 notice here that we are still lacking one more condition where we test in the bearish direction of the current bearish candle closing price is less than the opening price of the previous candle so in other words if it completes the uh, engulfing pattern and this is done on purpose because we still need to test if it's not done on this particular candle we might have it on the second or the third candle uh, taking into account the back candles parameter and this is done in this part here i'm not going to go through all the details you can check these four lines on your own later on it takes some time to uh, wrap your mind around it but anyway when we achieve all of these conditions then we return one for a bearish signal if not we are going to break out of this for loop because we don't have the um, the valid signal at the moment or the opposite way so when we are looking for a bullish engulfing signal we are going to uh, modify our conditions accordingly and it's almost the same algorithm there's nothing to be modified here we're checking for different candles if we are achieving the engulfment pattern in which case we are returning two otherwise we break out of the uh, the for loop and so on so at this point we have a function that tests an index of a candle and checks if the candle is achieving any bullish or bearish engulfing patterns so i'm going to make a copy of my uh, data frame filtering out all the candles where the high is equal to low so i'm skipping the candles where i had no movement on the market and i have no data to work on these are usually weekends bank holidays and so on so i'm taking only the parts that are interesting to my algorithm i'm making a copy of this storing all of this into a data frame called df I'm defining a new list called signal and for each row meaning for each candle in the data frame df i'm going to compute the signal of this particular row as the result of the function is engulfing taking into account the index row and the data frame df finally i'm going to store this signal into a new column into my data frame so at this point i like to visualize the signals that we are obtaining so we're using a part of the previous codes from this channel i'm not going through the details in brief i'm only checking where and for which candles i have a signal a bullish or a bearish signal and we are going to put some dots on the candlestick charts below or above the candles depending if we have a bullish signal or a bearish signal and i'm going to zoom in just to show you that we have a valid code that is working and doing what is intended so here we have a bullish engulfing candle and the purple point is below the candle there's another signal here and we can also check 
a third signal this one is a bearish signal the purple point is slightly above the uh, the candle so just to make things easier i'm removing the date gmt time index and i'm replacing this with an integer index and this is done by uh, simply resetting the index here i'm commenting this line i'm resetting the index and i'm printing the head so we can make sure we have uh, an integer index at this point and also when we are copying a part of uh, the data frame so for this particular data frame i'm going to reset the index then if we go back to uh, the visualization part we can simply select from which candle up to which candle we can plot this is our plotting between 4040 and the candle 4200 and we can see we have a signal a bearish signal at candle 4100 after which we have a small drop in the price but then we have a rise in the price so it might be considered as a false signal in this case depending where you will be putting your stop loss and where you are putting your take profit values we can also try for a different slice of the data so i'm taking indexes 6200 up to candle 6300 and we can see that we have a bullish candle here bullish engulfing candle with a bullish signal where with this uh, purple point and another one here it's a repeated signal at this point also so anyway when we have this signal we could have bought at this point and we have a strong rise in the price afterwards so some might be false positive and some might be true positive signals and the only way to know is to backtest the strategy and to see what it can give in terms of returns to carry on the backtesting i'm simply taking a slice of this particular frame so it's the dfpl it's the data frame on which i'm going to uh, conduct my testing i'm also computing the atr because i'm going to use it the take profit and stop loss values at some point for a certain strategy so the signal function is going to return simply the signal column and when we have a signal that is equal to two we're going to apply a buy position with a stop loss that is equal to uh, the closing price minus the sl atr variable which is which is defined here so i didn't really use the atr at this point i'm simply taking a fixed stop loss value or a stop loss distance that is equal to three and the take profit stop loss ratio is equal to two so we're going to run this with a cash that is equal to 1000 and a margin one over 10 and over three years of data the strategy would give around 213 percent in returns with a win rate percentage of 43.5 percent and a drawdown a percentage an average drawdown percentage of minus five percent the uh, thing that is alarming here is the maximum drawdown percentage which reaches minus 60 percent this is a huge it means it's not very safe as a strategy and this is probably due to the fact that we are using a high margin for this type of uh, trading anyway we can also modify the code if you don't want to use a fixed stop loss uh, distance we can simply take uh, an atr value let's say uh, the atr of the current candle i'm gonna put this here i'm gonna comment this part again and if we take twice the atr and the take profit stop loss ratio of around 1.5 maybe so we're going to run this again and see if it gives something decent so we have 89 percent in returns and if you compare this with the buy and hold return percentage which is 51.2 percent we can see that this strategy is more profitable now we can also use the trailing stop loss and uh, with a fixed distance so i'm taking a trailing stop loss distance of five which means at first we're putting a stop loss when we buy or we sell a position and the stop loss value or the stop loss price is going to follow the price in the good direction until the price reverses back and touches this particular value i'm not going through all the details of these because i've done a specific video on trailing stop loss programming you can check back this video in the playlist so anyway we're taking the same conditions we have a cash of one thousand dollars and a margin one over ten and i'm going to run this with a trailing stop loss we get um 422 percent of returns compared to 51.2 return 
as a buy and hold strategy and we compared the 422 with the previously obtained 89 or 200 percent uh, returns when we used a fixed stop loss take profit values so as we can see uh, the trailing stop loss in this case and for this particular stock has a great advantage and we have 422 percent in return we have a win rate of 54.7 percent and if we check the uh, drawdowns we have a maximum drawdown percentage of 53 percent and an average drawdown of minus six percent so i'm always bothered or scared of these maximum drawdowns values because this is the proof that no matter how good your strategy is if you apply it in a mechanical or an algorithmic way it's not going to work all the time there might be some difficult times where your strategy or your program will struggle and it will drop down you have to be patient and the best way is to have two or three different algorithmic strategies running in parallel so that when one is going down the other two compensating somehow for the current losses so if you want to experiment on these values and try to optimize the strategy you can uh, bring your own input into these remember i didn't use the uh, moving averages in the strategy you might want to include the slopes of the moving averages to have a trend confirmation and so on so it's a lot of ideas you can build upon this particular code you can download it from the link in the description and just apply your own improvements if you wish so so that's all i had to tell you for this strategy i hope you guys liked it it's pretty simple you don't have to use it as an algorithmic strategy you can always go for manual trading when you see an engulfing candle with a small wick good luck to you and until our next video trade safe see you next time